Hello folks and uh welcome to Army Man uh World at War Part Two Uh Air Land and Sea. This is the second game in the series. As you notice the heads up display is a lot different. Uh also your damage bar looks different. Uh you still have your bayonet and you still have your binos. Uh, however, there are some uh, gameplay changes, and that's what this uh, boot camp uh, thing is about, is just to show off the various gameplay changes, and just to play around a little bit. Uh, also, I'm going to be starting this LP on hard difficulty, just to try hard, this, uh, to see if that affects the AI any. Uh, if it Looks like I'm getting pwned, and I'll probably move down to medium. Uh, but I'm not going to go easy this time around. Also, uh, here's the gameplay feature that I was talking about. That was a change. Uh, as you noticed before in the previous LP, especially during later stages and some of the earlier stages, uh, I would go into this type of mode here. This time they were nice enough to give you a crosshair so you can aim your shots. Of course, there is an auto aim with that, but uh, it gives you it gives you fine-tuned shots. It gives you a little bit more of a chance to aim further ahead instead of setting off your position. Uh, also, the next thing, next change here is uh, when you go. To do a crawl, it'll automatically put you to kneel position. Uh, so you have to hold down the button if you want to keep crawling. So that's the other gameplay change. There's also, a, supposedly, when I was looking at the control configures, there's also a quick turn button. So probably expecting stuff to spawn behind you. Uh, don't know. Uh, but those were the gameplay changes I wanted to show you. Uh, I do have footage of the uh, auto aim in effect as well, but uh, I'm just showing the uh, aim to shot more. Like I said, you have to press and hold it. Uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and move on to the next range. Here we are at the next grenade, at the next range. It's the mortar range. Let's see how they change the mortars. And of course, it gives you a prompt in case you didn't bump into the sign. Uh, but anyway, let's see how it goes. Same as before, but uh, this time the uh, aiming is. The aiming zoom uh, hitbox is moves quicker and has further distance out. So basically, they just made it where you can mortar farther and aim faster. Now for the bazookas. Uh, nothing too fancy here. Looks like they didn't really change much here. Anyway, we'll go ahead and move on to the next range, uh, the grenade range. Now, people who watched my previous LP know that I stink with hand grenades. So let's see if they made this game a little more friendlier for me, or if they made it worse. So we're going to just chuck a few grenades and see how we go. All right, simple target. Let's see how it goes. Oh, it didn't explode the one I was aiming at. So there is a little bit of compensation for the bounce. Also, I aimed farther and miss, I hit that target at least. Now let's see if we can hit this target here. Yeah, hit that one. Looks pretty good, but let's try another set of grenades. Let's get used to it. Okay, we'll try a little bit harder target here. Because I nailed that one. Let's try an even further target. Nope, I missed. And I'll try that again. Nope, still missed. 
See, uh, just because it gives you that range meter doesn't mean that it's going to do the shot, but at least it gives you a little bit better arc than it did in the other game. So, uh, that's good. Good that they improved the arc so you can actually throw a grenade rather than it all of a sudden whamming into the wall and accidentally blowing yourself up. Now let's see what they did with explosives. Last time it was 9 seconds. This time it's 8 seconds. Uh, so they reduced the timer by 1, sec one to 2 seconds. Uh, again, Sarge's Heroes actually had a timer. Uh, this time, still no timer. And eight seconds is still plenty enough time to get to, get to some cover and away from the explosive charge. So nothing, no big deal here. Okay, let's go on to the next range. When this ex when this charge goes off. Okay. Now to the flamethrower range. Okay. Well, in Sarge's Heroes, the best way to damage your enemy was always the beginning puff of smoke. However, I noticed that in the uh, World at War 1, the flamethrowers really didn't matter too much. Uh, so here we go. We'll just do a, a quick burst test and elongated. As you can see, the elongated doesn't do as much damage uh, to the trees here versus the short bursts. So it looks like for this game, if we pick up a flamethrower, we're using short bursts. And now we're into the final range. Uh, this is the combat range. It has a no vehicles title there. I guess they don't they don't want to have a vehicle tutorial for you. Anyway, this is the combat range. Uh, this time, they act, instead of pop, moving targets, uh, just pop up targets. This time, they actually have targets that'll shoot at you. But they nerfed the. Uh, Nerf when they'll trigger for you to give you a chance to shoot them. So uh, this is a little easy, but still a little challenging. Anyway, our objective here is just to clear our way through and then uh, kill the flag. As long as you're good and good enough with using your ra your ranged shot and kind of uh, scanning the area with the tan, you should be able to uh, get them real quick. Like I said, it, it, once you get used to firing at stupid ranges, it's nothing too hard there. Just uh, remember that the uh, crosshair is when I'm actually manually aiming the gun, versus uh, if I'm just running and charged at the hip, that actually means that I'm depending more upon the auto-aim. Uh, also, the shot bursts from the rifle range, I don't think I mentioned it, but it's still single shot in this one. It's not double shot. Or, or, you know, not, not a burst, it's just single shots. So that means I'll be button mashing again. Uh, also, uh, could, uh, thank you for uh, Army Man Channel for uh, uploading the... PS1 version of uh, Airland and Sea intro. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't have the intro for the uh, PS1 version of World War, and I don't know which version that is. Uh, if it ends up being the same version as the PS1 version, I'll go ahead and upload those uh, to my other LP. If they're not, uh, then, oh well. But... Uh, See, there's two Army Man World at Wars. There's one that has a top-down view with it, and then there's another one that has, has it like this. So, uh, and the one with the top-down view is for the PC. So, uh, that's kind of 
why I'm not posting those. However, if you do want to check them out, you can go to the uh, his uh, YouTube name is Army Man Channel, and he has uh, the intros for all the PC PC games for the uh, Army Man series. Well, let's go ahead and play around with the bayonet. Looks like I'm I can't get a good, good bayonet line on him. And now I aggroed him. But looks like I popped him that time. Looks like the bayonet's a little stronger. Can you spot the tan that's shooting me? Bet you can't. <laughs> Oh, bet you can't. Guys, don't know where the tan is that's shooting at me. Well, last chance. Any guesses? Yeah. Any guesses? All right. Well, here's the answer. He, he's right up on top of the building. Luckily, he, he that tracer round gave him away. But as you can see, I'm looking around for the back shot as well. Let's see if anyone's behind me too before I kill him. I'll say I'll offer you some grenades <laughs> for whatever reason. So we'll go ahead and finish the guy off now before we capture the flag. And uh, there we go. And we graduated boot camp. So this was Kinky signing out. Thank you.